It's surreal just flying over Bob Hoover's neighborhood. That guy's my hero for my flying career. We had a great time in this blue sling too, but not after scrubbing a flight in the red one. Go by the airplane real quick. You got it. My controls. Not liking it. 30 mag. Maybe. It's doing something different. They're not firing at all. We probably have to shut down here. Now this is why we do uh, pre-flight checks. Yeah. It's a gray day in Southern California. I'm at Zamperini Field to do my first checkout in a light sport aircraft. The Sling 2 is one of those planes that destroys the general impression that LSAs are not real airplanes. I'll be flying with Omar. He's a CFI that was a student pilot when I started the Flight Chops YouTube channel. When I first started flying, you were probably one of the first YouTube channels I watched, uh, and then like all throughout my training, uh, Flight Chops is kind of like that video, that channel you go to to figure out, you know, how to do certain things or learn from. You post a lot of your, you know, mistakes, doing good, doing bad, whatever it may be. So it's kind of cool now, do full circle and, and and come fly with you. As with every flight training lesson, we started with a thorough ground briefing. So we're gonna do the checkout today. Um, just a quick background on the sling. It's a South African aircraft designed in South Africa. This is the US kind of base for it. It runs a Rotax engine up in the front uh, and it also doesn't have any cables. Uh, it's all push rods. Like this is what your panel will look like. If you see 2,500 RPM on your on your tack, you're basically at idle power. That's so weird. Yeah, yeah so it's a lot easier to get used to than you might think because it's just, it's just instead of going from 500 to 25, you're going from 25 to five. It's, yeah, once you get your head around yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. So you're gonna see like really high RPM settings. You're gonna see like on takeoff, 5,400 RPM. The prop is not spinning at 5,400 RPM. It, there's a reduction gear in it, so it goes from the engine to the gearbox essentially, and then to the prop. Let's talk real quick about what we're gonna do today. So here's us, Zamperina Field, Torrance. We're gonna take off, we're gonna head out here to Palace Ridge practice area where we'll be flying over a President of the United States golf course, or we'll go out here to the, to the Long Beach practice area. Both these practice areas are incredibly busy. There's like five different airports that use them. You got uh, Torrance, you got Hawthorne. I know some guys from Santa Monica come down here, Fullerton, John Wayne, all these guys use this little practice area right here. The walk around was pretty standard, but there were a few interesting things about this airplane. Flip on the master switch and then just give it a second to warm up, and now you can drop those flaps. If the backup is on, the EVA is on, and the master is on, it's charging that battery. And what's the rule, I think, on fuel tanks? I think they only have to be accurate when it's empty, or something like that. Yeah. Okay, underneath the wing, torpedo tube. Just check that it's not clogged, and right below that, you see that little hole right there? That's your angle of attack indicator. And then we're gonna go ahead and sump the fuel. Yeah, so this is transparent, so it's MoGas? It is MoGas, yeah, we don't, we can use AvGas, but we don't, we don't need to, and. Yeah, a lot of people skip that part of what color is it. Mm -hmm. That matters. It does matter, yeah. So, so here in this airplane, we can run AvGas and we can run MoFuel, but that's like three something a gallon, and AvGas is like five something a gallon. The Rotax power plant was probably the most unique thing on this airplane as far as I was concerned from my experience. Uh, we got pretty deep into it in the briefings, and I'll share the procedures as well in real time on Patreon. But for now, let's go flying. All right, go and start the engine. Clear. It starts up pretty quick. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right we'll go and get our ATIS. Go to Theremin, runway two and left, one one right, closed. Antenna site is closed. Taxiway Alpha between Golf and Hotel is closed. Taxiway Golf is closed. Taxiway Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, and Golf north of Taxiway Alpha is closed. This is us right over here, right there. Okay, right on Echo. What they're going to give us is just Echo Alpha Juliet. Any questions about the airplane? Uh, no. Okay, it's good so far. The, the rudder is a little stiffer than I expected, but yeah, just a little bit. Now, is that because the tail wheels on the ground? Or the, the, nose, the nose wheels on the ground, Once correct. it's off, it'll be more correct. Okay, yeah, that's what I expect. Run up area is right there off to the right. Nose yeah. wheels straight. Yeah. Okay, and then re-engage. your parking brake. So holding it and then yep. on. Yep. I'll read your checklist for you. If we're facing into the wind, our brakes are set. Uh, we don't, we'll do a pilot briefing again. If we lose our engine above 600, we're going to go turn around. If we lose it below, we're going to go straight ahead. I'll handle the controls. Uh, if you want to handle the radios, do you have any questions about that? Uh, no briefing. Okay. Let's go ahead and do our box check for our controls. 
Okay, free and correct. Cool. Let's do our mag check. Let's just go to 4,000 RPM. Do it slowly. So. Yeah, your tack's right there. Yeah. Guys left. Back to both. Right. That's a tiny drop. And the POH said it might be as much as 300. Yep. It's the max is 300. Because it didn't even do 50. Yet. Yeah. Okay, back to both. Cool. All right. Our instruments are in the green. Let's go ahead and get our. Yeah, let's bring the power up a little bit. I had a feeling it wasn't running right, and Omar's facial expression confirmed it. Can borrow the airplane real quick? Okay, you got it. My controls. Not liking it. Dirty mag. Maybe. It's doing something different. Yeah, that's not right. They're all running. Like, it almost felt like one cylinder wasn't running, but... Yeah. Yankee Fox. Two was pretty low. Kind was it? Like the temperature was low, but it was still running, I think. Just do that one more time. The altitude. Just watch the temperature on two. Yankee Fox. So the EGT. Comes down lower than the rest of them. Can not arrive. Five Yankee Fox. Or it did before. That's interesting. So, now it's fine. So maybe it wasn't firing at number two. What about the system would possibly allow for two cylinders like that to be isolated? I don't think it's a max, because you wouldn't lose both cylinders. That's what I'm saying. If it was on the left, you'd lose all four. Right. So whatever happened before isn't happening now. Yeah. Do you want to try a single? Did you try a single? Single yeah, bags? Yeah, I did. Let's do that one more time. Yeah. See, there it is. Yeah. Two and four look like they're not firing now. Would you agree with that? Yeah. That Let's try that again. Yeah, that's not firing. That's not firing. So you've lost two cylinders. Yeah. They're not firing at all. Good stuff. We probably have to shut down here. Yeah, we should probably just good, uh, good for the engine, eh? Now this is why we do uh, pre-flight checks. Yeah. We decided to head back and switch airplanes. Amazingly, Jean back at the shop quickly diagnosed our very unique and unusual problem. Yeah, so the uh, carburetor is on the one side for two and four. So this, that's what it should look like floating. And that one's sunk to the bottom. As you have demand that the, the engine's using fuel, the system valve goes down and it'll refill. The thing that does floats push up. You do do it. Is that? Right. That's the little cistern valve. Yeah. And so the floats, if they're floating, they would do that. When it's idling, no more fuel will go through. But yeah. if that was there, fuel would be coming through. It was flooding. It was flooding, yeah. Right. Yeah. So what is happening now, it is refilling. And at idle, when you didn't have a big demand for fuel, the fuel would go up through and run rich. The little things that gave it away were the color of this. It should yeah. be silver. Uh -huh. But I could see in the sunlight it was actually slightly dark as if it had fuel on it. Yeah, that's a great story about troubleshooting because we racked our brains not having enough, I didn't have enough experience to like figure out what is unique about cylinder two and four. And that's why it's so important when there's a problem, have a look quickly yeah. at the things because then you assist in by coming yeah. in and saying it. Exactly. Yeah. So it was no coincidence that Jean knows slings so well. I'm Jean, I'm from uh, South Africa. I was lucky enough to get involved with the slings right at the beginning. I helped uh, Mike and James build the first one that they flew around the world, the first two-seater. A few years later, we built the four-seater, and I was lucky enough to fly that right around the world, building some beautiful slings, yeah. So we jumped into a pretty similar airplane, but there were definitely some differences. So again, I'm not gonna get into this stuff in real time, but I will share it with Patreon supporters. All right, man, your controls. It's not typical to only have one or two, usually there's four. That's Strike Commander, that's what uh, we were used to fly. Yep. And I could be wrong, but I think he used to fly out of here. So yeah, this is a Robinson helicopter plant. This is where all Robinson helicopters are made. Wow, so cool. Yeah. At times it requires like four hands to fly it, um, because one difference is it doesn't have toe brakes. So this is theoretically like the chipmunk, but it's all the wrong hand. Like, this would be my throttle and brake hand, this would be a stick. There's a multi-part series of my chipmunk training publicly available and several episodes on Patreon related to that stuff. And again, I'm not going to cover the run-up in real time, so watch for that one on Patreon soon. So park brake on? Park brake on, yes sir. Alright, let's do our box check. Check your controls. And then let's go to flaps, take off position one. Uh, we need to apply our seatbelts. Your seatbelts good. Alright, lights, we're all good. We'll turn on our landing light once we get on the runway. For takeoff, the procedure you're going to do is obviously just like any other airplane, stick into the wind wherever it's coming from. This airplane will take off in about 700 feet. You can do kind of like a soft field procedure where you bring the stick up. That's how I usually do my takeoffs on this airplane. Right around 50 to 55, just start pulling that stick back and right away you're gonna notice how sensitive it is. All right, so my style is sling 288 Sierra Lima, holy short tuna red at Juliet, right path. Sling 288 Sierra Lima, Torrance Tower, right close traffic approved for my 290 right cliff takeoff. Sierra right cliff for takeoff, right close traffic approved, 8 Sierra Lima. All right, you're clear.
clear on the right. Five's clear. Yep. Five's clear on the left. I'm going to go get your landing light on. Okay, so we'll take this one on the roll. Yep. Here, here we go. Yep, we're good to go. Brakes are off. Here Brakes right. are off. Beautiful. Yeah, it's got the power. And just relax your hand, don't overcorrect. Start flying the airplane. There you go. There you go. Yeah, a little bit. It, it gets off the ground, but then you push it back forward. And just relax your hand for me. Just relax your hand. There you go. And let's watch that airspeed, okay? So we're climbing out at 72. And let's just get lined up at the runway here. That's a pretty good pitch up. Yeah. I think you can start that right hand turn now. And you were clear on the right, my friend. That was a really localized rain shower there. Too. Yeah. Okay, you're going to power back. Departing party arrival, runway 29 or right, clear for the option. 29, clear for the option, and we have assistance sign at 8 All right, when you're ready. For the base turn? Yes, sir. Starting to get a little rain there. 10 flaps? Yeah, let's go ahead and go 10 degrees flaps. And I want you at 75 for base, okay? We're a little lower than what I like to be. Are you going to have another do uh, notch of flaps now? And then when you're ready, make your final turn. Everyone, 665 on final? Uh, 70 knots, 70. And then let's go to flaps three. Should help you out. And then on landing, I'll get your flaps for you, okay? Ready to touch and go? Uh -huh. If we like it. Yeah, if we like it, we'll do a touch and go. 70 knots, do what you gotta do with the power. And then we have the runway made. We might need to add a touch of power. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's looking good. All right, now bring that power back. And let's start bringing that nose up. Don't overcorrect it. Just keep flying the airplane. There you go. That's good right there. Beautiful. Yeah, you were on the ground the first time. There you go. Four power, let's get out of here. So you got on the ground, and it was so smooth, I don't think you felt it. There you go. I thought I ballooned. Yeah, no, you're on the ground. That's awesome. It went good, I'll take that. And we had it straight that time. Yeah. Oh, it's a nice airplane. Yeah. How do you like the feel of it? That's great. Keep that turn going. It's kind of like 4,000 RPM. That might give it to you a little bit better. And then just uh, get parallel with that runway. And we'll do another one. Yeah, we'll fly a little tighter this time. Yeah, I like to fly a pretty tight pattern. I didn't think we were low on base until it became clear on final that we did need that yeah. touch of power. Yeah. If certain sight pictures, you know, just don't look right, yeah. I'm not saying that it was a bad sight picture, it was just different. You're clear for the options. You can start that turn whenever you want. Okay, yeah, we'll fly a little tighter this time. Yeah. So now. Okay, we'll get one notch in. Yep. All right, we are clear for the option. We are clear for the option. All right, let's go flaps three. Okay. Okay. So it feels high to me, but I think that's what you said it wanted. Yeah, so keep making that right turn. Just yeah. head into it and stay coordinated. There you go. And you should see yourself settling down. Weird, it's not coming down like it did last time. No, but it will. There it goes. There's always that sink right, right there on the runway. Okay, again, if you need to, go around. Oh, we're good. All right, let's watch that airspeed. Let's start bringing that nose up. Bring that nose up for me. There you go. There you go. A little bit less. Beautiful. That was perfect. Full power. It wasn't lost on me that I was rolling on a runway that Bob Hoover had probably used many times. And we headed out to the practice area to do some air work in his stomping ground. And we're going to head out that way. We'll do some steep turns. I don't know if the ceilings are high enough to do stalls, but we'll, we'll do some air work. They must squawk 0257 and make your southbound turn at or above 1,600. Departure frequency would be 127.2. 0257, the southbound turn at or above 1,600. All right, our instruments all look good. Everything's in the green. Okay, once it's trimmed out, it's easy. Yeah. All right, how do the clouds look? Well, they're low over there, but it's isolated. Yeah. They, but it's clearly not below the pattern altitude. So what an interesting looking day. And we're flying right over Bob Hoover's neighborhood right now? We are actually, yeah, Palace Verdes is, 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 uh, is where his house was. This airplane has a chute, does it? It does not. The Tango is has it, and it would be right here. Uh, we got Trump Golf Course, the baseball diamond over there. That's Point Furman, and then Point Vicente is over there on the, on the right side. Catalina Island right there? Catalina Island's right down there. It was owned by the Wrigley family, who owns the Chicago Cubs. You're on the edge of mainland America. So when you look on a map and you see the beginning of the Pacific Ocean from the United States, that's where you are right now. Very cool. Let's right. go that way. Because over there, we got that layer of 5,000. All right, you want to do a steep turn? Yep, let's do it. Okay, so I'm clear on my left. Here. Yep, and we'll I'm clear on the right. Do a left one first? Yeah, let's do a left one. Okay, so let's do a full 360. Sure. Okay. Folks, I need to 
Runway Delta Mike 7000, descending yeah, via the Pick up a little bit. Extra. Nice, huh? Yeah, that's beautiful. That doesn't take much to uh, get that in there. Good stuff. And if you want, you can do a continuous right one as well. Okay. If you want to just transition right to it, just make sure you're on that rudder. Yep. I'll just roll that off the shoreline yep. and then go the other way. You're good right now if you want it. There you go. And just push that stick forward a little bit for me. There you go. Didn't have a horizon there through that rain cloud. Yeah. So you want to try some slow flight? Sir. Sure. Okay, cool. So okay, get set up for it. You're clear on the right. Yeah, so let's go power completely off. For the power, you're gonna notice that if you're in a Cherokee or, or, or a 172, when you pull the power back, a little bit does a lot when you're changing the power settings. In this airplane, you pull the power back a lot and it doesn't really do too much because of that reduction gearing. So the engine's powering down, but the ratio at which it's powering down the prop is a little bit different. Code flaps three, and then start adding the power. The 57, nine, right about nine, now. Uh, it's got 30 degrees of flaps. Uh, they are electric flaps, so you got that little, it's a switch. Three clicks. I want 55, 55, 55 knots is what you're for. So whatever gives you 55 knots. And I want you to deal with the airplane's zero like zero at a lower, you can stay at 52. It'll probably be nice to stay at 50. And you're saying that there's no stall horn. There's no, that there's your angle attack indicator. We think you're still on the green. Hey, how about a right hand turn? So let's go to heading of south. Mostly rudder, time and aileron. Just don't let that drop below 50, okay? 5,000, zero charge, Charlie, have you? I'm flirting with it though. Okay. Yeah, so low airspeed, high angle attack, super important. Do you want to climb up to. Uh, 3,000. Okay, keep it at 50, yeah, 50 knots. Let's do a right hand turn uh, to a heading of 210 just so we can get away from that cloud. So you see, it, I mean, it's a pretty stable airframe when, it, when, it's, when it's at a low power setting. It handles great, it speeds and turns. It's just, it's a good feeling airplane. Perfect, dude, nice job. Right, so, Gosling 2880, Lima, we're going to head back into Torrance. We've got hotel. 213, 28 Delta, good day. Standard approach, just like you would normally do, bring it in. 72 knots, pull the power anytime you want really. Like the second you realize you're gonna make the runway, just pull the power because it, it requires such little power to actually fly that approach. That's why this airplane, it only burns about four and a half gallons per hour. This episode was shot about a year after Bob Hoover had died. Feeling really surreal just flying over Bob Hoover's neighborhood. That guy's my hero for my flying career. God, it was a year ago, like a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, my dog was born the day he died. Really? The puppy we got, so we named him Hoover. I never got the chance to meet him, but from what I hear, like stories of him, he would never like talk about himself. He'd always want to hear about your flying, yep. which I think is super, super awesome. Let's go ahead and start descending. Let's go to flaps two, because we're pretty high right now. We're gonna land with a nose wheel up. No flat landings, no pancakes, no sloppy sets, none of that. We're dissipate that energy before landing. With 30 degrees of flaps, you're not gonna have to worry about hitting the tail. You're gonna lose authority on the horizontal stabilizer before that actually happens. And we can go to flaps three. Let's, uh, let's get that descent going. Don't overfly the airplane, okay? Yep. Thanks again to Omar for inviting me to fly the sling. If you want to learn more about them, visit airplanefactory.com. And thanks to all the rest of the sponsors and Patreon supporters for helping us make this content. I definitely couldn't do it without them. All right, cool, man. Thanks. That was a good flight. Yeah. Good work. And please do visit flightshops.com for our back catalog and to join our mailing list. We've got a lot more of this type of content coming. It's all thanks to the community. In the meantime, keep your flight chops sharp. It's, it's somewhere between awesome and depressing. Yeah, you were saying that. You were saying that, yeah. Because, yeah. like, I haven't taken three years to get my answer rating, and this guy was a student pilot when I started my channel, and now he's my instructor. Yeah, but you're inspiring the next generation, so it works out for you. I'll take well. it. It works out for you. Awesome, well. man.